Uh, hello, my name is Aiden Schmidt, and I will be interviewing Nick Ringelsetter, who's right here, with all his art around us. Um, so what do you do with your free time besides art? <laughs> well, back when I had free time, or can make free time happen, uh, my, my hobbies are fishing, paintball, and playing with fireworks like that pretty much sums it up like like I honestly before so there was a transition in my life where I was uh, I, I used to pursue paintball pretty seriously I was uh, in high school I used to play semi-pro actually and I was really good at it still I'm good at it but at one point I had to think to myself which one's gonna pay the bills or which one you know um, would probably be more realistic to make a career out of so I went the art route I'm glad I did because I still play paintball but it's more of a fun thing now so so, uh, why and how did you become an artist? Why? Well, okay, so my history as an artist, and uh, I was always a doodling kid. Ever since I could remember, I guess my older sister said she taught me how to draw, like when I was like, when I was young, or when I was really, really young, if I can remember, and when I started, because I don't know, I, was, I always remember drawing, and I always made the joke that I was born with a pencil in my hand, because it's, it's and then it wasn't until later on in life I realized that because my brain is always all over the place. There's always a hundred ideas in my head. I learned that because of me drawing, it lets those ideas out, and that allows me to focus in real life. Otherwise, I am a space case and I'm all over the place, but when I'm being creative, it's not even just drawing, it's just being creative. I mean, like When I'm doing something in the arts, whether it's woodworking, graphic design, video production, painting, just doing anything that's creative, it helps me focus and helps me, you know, just live, I guess, in a way. All right. Um, did you know you wanted to do this kind of art when you were in middle school? No, actually, it's always funny because, like, my friends are like, remember when back in school when you're just like, yeah, I just like to make, I, I like to draw aliens and monsters, and that's pretty much all it was. Like, I did not know I could make a career at it. That's the the mind still today blows me away. The same art that I created in middle school is now what I'm getting worldwide recognized for. And I would have never thought that because I remember like being in middle school, um, it was a, the only teacher that ever said anything about me doodling because I was quiet. I never talked. I never talked my whole, you know, I was always a quiet kid. It wasn't until my junior year before I started talking, but I always drew a lot. And Mr. Mr. Coppernall, I don't know, he's probably not teaching here anymore. Or, but he, uh, in math class, yelled at me one time, and that was the first teacher's art. Like, I was always drawing, and they, they knew I drew, and they, they, and they let me do it, except for one time, because I was drawing on his desk, and he goes, Nick, I love your art, but please stop drawing on my desk. And that's like, every time I see him, I see him in the public all the time, I was like, I want to go over and just tell him, like, just like, be like, hey, man, like, I still draw on desks. But now I make a living doing it, but you're, I remember you because of that one moment. So yeah, no, it's funny. It's, um, no, I'm still doing the same thing I was doing in middle school. And like I always tell people, if you went back to the third grade and would ask me the same question, it was the same things I love doing. I love to draw, I love to paintball, I love to fish, and I like to go on ventures. It hasn't changed. Wait, paintballing as a third grader? Yep, my dad started me in third grade. He was, uh... He, my dad was my dad's a singer. <laughs> my dad's a singer songwriter, and he loved paintball as well. So he's also artistic and loved that. So you know, I kind of learned that, all that from him. So, <laughs> um, how do you uh, how do you make a living? Wait, how do you make a living with your art? Can you sell enough work to support yourself? Yes, yes, you can. Um, um, though I guess the 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 way if I was to break it down in under a minute is. I have price points for everybody. Whether you have 20 bucks in your pockets or $10,000 in your pocket, I have a price point for everybody to be able to afford something in my booth. When I started out as an artist and I made my first sale at the Spring Green Art Show back in 2008, June 2008, and I was so pumped that somebody wanted a piece of my art for their walls, and I, got, I was really sad because at that point I was only doing originals. So I, was, uh, I, I felt bad because I learned that a lot of people want my artwork, but they can't afford all my originals. So, what I, so I learned how to make prints, and I had bought my own equipment. I do all my, all my printing, framing, stretching myself, so that way I can have a price point for everyone. So everyone who comes to my booth can walk out with something. And because of that, when I do, the, do my outdoor street shows, 
I sell a lot of work. There's shows I'll go to where I'll sell two to three hundred pieces of artwork at one show, and I guess I guess you break it down. That's what it is. And then the reason why my work sells every every piece I do has a story, and there's also things in it. I tell the story based on things I'm into. So when you look at my work, there's a lot of cartoon references, sci-fi, and uh, what do you got? That fan drives me nuts. <laughs> uh, how do you make make a look? How do you make a living with your art? Can you sell enough to, enough to su to support yourself? Um, absolutely. Um, so like when I break it down, if I was to break it down in under a minute, like how to be successful at doing art, it's having price points for everybody and knowing your market. Uh, so the the structure of my business is I create a big original that the art collector, museums, gallery people will want to buy to hang up as their big, you know, focal piece to draw people in. But I also have my print line, which of which runs anywhere from twenty dollars to four hundred fifty dollars. It's kind of like the average price gap for those. Because um, after my doing my first show, I did nothing but originals, and I felt bad because everybody wanted a piece of my artwork. And at that time, I didn't realize, you know, that people were going to want my work. I just wanted to sell one piece, and I thought that was good enough. And then to find out that. It, you know, I almost sold all my pieces my very first day, and I felt bad for people who couldn't afford stuff. So it's like there's got to be a way to make everybody happy because the idea is some everybody wanted something from me. There's got to be a way to create something that everyone can afford. And because of having the prints, like you said, like I said, they're all signed, limited edition. They're all high quality. I went out and bought the best printer, the best varnish, you know, the best canvas, and I do them all myself, which people love that too. They just love the fact that the artist actually makes his own prints and went through all the necessary steps to do it all himself, and th that alone draws a lot of business my way, and people love that, that, that I have that as an option. And, and uh, what, uh, let's say, what is probably one of my, like, driving forces behind why people love my work, even if they didn't know the story, because every single one of my pieces is a personal story to my just to me is I use pop culture references like with cartoons and sci-fi and gaming to tell the story so even if you didn't know the story you would love the piece because it has Rick and Morty in it or it has um, you know a lot of yeah you got Spongebob behind us here people love Spongebob and and then when I tell the story then they have that other then they know the actual story and that will also drive them in as well so having the story and things in your paintings that you can that, that they can relate to and I always make the joke like if I wanted to make a million dollars in one year doing art I just have to paint cats cats <laughs> cats 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 everybody wants cats so. <laughs> <laughs> um, where do you get the idea to make make art out of stop signs Oh yeah, you seen the stop signs? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, no, that was actually like so through my journey, I've been trademarked for things I wasn't even trying to be trademarked for. People know me as the the skateboard artist, the t-shirt artist, the stop sign artist, the glow in the dark artist, like you know, the booger artist is one of them I get known for. It's like, oh, what? Well, the booger artist? Where'd that come from? I just did one booger painting, you know. But the stop signs. So my dad had a barn in our farm and he sold it and in that barn there was traffic signs and there and my dad's like what are we gonna do with these and i go well i just started painting this year like it uh 2008 when i started painting that's when you know, pretty much when he sold this property and i was like well i'll go paint on these two stop signs so i finished my first stop sign like i think it was like january of 09 put up both of the stop signs on social facebook and everyone's like, this is cool. Like, I want one. I want one. It's like, really? Like, okay, cool. Like, this is awesome. But, you know, like, these are originals. It took me time. This is what they cost. And around that same time, I think it was about a year or two later, is when metal printing technology came into the, into, into the world. So I was like, I can offer a metal printed stop sign. And I did three different sizes. So the consumer would be, have the ability to buy it at affordable rate. So... The, that's how the that's the evolution of the stop sign. I was just painting on two stop signs I've ha had in my dad's barn. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, how often do you experience art block? Or art block? Like like, like not run out of ideas and like. It does happen. Yeah, it does happen. Um, you know, I start a new piece. <laughs> <laughs> Which you okay? So so yes, art block does happen. 
and I usually start another piece. My favorite thing to do is create backgrounds. And at one point in my in my in my career, I remember having 60 backgrounds started in my shop. And none of them ever, like a lot of them never ever got finished. And I evolved so fast to where they went into a pile where other artists came and they took the canvases to go paint on them themselves. But yeah, that's I guess with the artist block, like even though I have I have a binder of awesome artwork, but I never open it to look at. I just keep adding to it and adding to it. And when I have art, my, my artist, my painting block, you would think I'd open that up and like pull one of those out and work on it. I don't for some reason. I just don't know what it is. And I just keep adding to it, but not pulling from it. So I have all these ideas. I figure someday on my website that I would put up a whole page of all these ideas. I'll take photos in the story, photos in the story. So everybody has access to all these ideas. They can, you can go on there grab this one idea and it's like ah, i'm gonna go create this you know maybe i'll have an open source i think that'd be a, kind of like a fun idea but yeah artist the painter's block i just keep making new backgrounds and that's why i have way too many canvases in my shop than i should <laughs> um why is it that you decide to, to come back to spring green to show off your work this is a uh, very personal i guess you'd say um uh this this, this would be like a good like hour-long interview let me just break it down really quick to the PowerPoint version is I'm at a transition in my life right now where when I started my art career the art that you see behind you and then next to you is the art that I've always seen in my head and I finally achieved that this year this last end of last year this year and it's weird it's a weird situation to be at because now like i achieved what i set out to do and when i got to the you know the end of last year it's like now what like i don't want to do the same thing over and over and over like this is what i wanted to do and i the, i'm the best at it in the world currently and what do we do now it's like well i want to like i'm doing something that pretty much i was told i couldn't do um i can't remember if anyone from the schooling system ever said I could pursue art and make something of myself. I don't think anyone said really anything. And I kind of want to, I feel like with this transition in my life, getting ready to go down to the biggest show in the country to show off, show the world a brand new medium of art that doesn't exist until I reveal it to the world next week. Um, I thought it would be very, you know, like very personal to come back to the school that I went through and show the new work to the students and be like, hey, like I was also, you know, a middle schooler at one point and I if I would have if I was to go back in time and show up at the school when I was in the school and just like grab myself and like what would I have told myself that would have sped up the process like the process I went through to get to where I am now I'm glad I went through it that way because I you know I lost everything three times had to start over and you know nothing was ever given to me like it was all hard work and like it's very it's it's a very personal thing for me to be here right now because I'm hoping I'm hoping that there's like five other quiet kids that sit in the back of the room that don't talk and don't ever think they're ever going to talk to the public or give speeches and pursue art and actually make a, a, a successful living doing art and hopefully I can grab their attention to be like hey like nobody knows anything do what your gut tells you because it will lead you to amazing things yeah, that's amazing. Uh, okay. Um, how did you go from wanting to be an engineer or scientist to, to being one of the, the art, artists, best artists in the world? Someone's done some research here. <laughs> or I was it's in like, the art class. Really. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're, you, just, you, just, you just made up these questions recently? You're on the ball. So, yeah, no, it's, uh, like I said, it's, I took the fun route without even knowing, like, <laughs> because I was terrified. But everything's terrifying. So yeah, no, when I was in the freshman year in high school, I was like, you know, they're like, when you leave like the eighth grade, they're like, get ready because you have to start planning your future when you go into high school, this big scary building, you know, like, and it's like, well, like, I really like drawn futuristic cities, self-sustained ecosystems where we all work together as like a tribe in one building where we have like, you know, like a, like there's a, there's a movie called Biodome. I don't know if it, that inspired my brain to think that way, but why don't we have these civilizations that all kind of work together as one and everything you ever needs in these buildings? So I'm like drawn in the study hall. Like I never studied in study hall or listened in class. I was always drawing stuff like, and I was like, we need self-sustained civilizations and like, what's it going to look like? I'm drawing like these bubble houses with these 
is a electronic magnetic trains coming out and they go to other civilizations that are also self-sustained and it's like and now I look back on it's like that's crazy why did someone like hey like, like you're like this is you should be thinking like this you should be like skateboarding and hacky sacking but you're drawing like all this futuristic stuff that today now makes sense it's happening you know it's, it's mind-boggling so I thought I was going to be an engineer at that point and that's what I was kind of kind of you know, kind of going with. And I also love science, but it was definitely going to be engineering over science. Thank you for your time. Have a nice day. Thank you, bud.